It's a lose-lose proposition. My next guest has some thoughts on the subject. Please welcome to the show, Rebecca Walzer. Rebecca, I, I, I think that this one got me the most over, over all the pandemic things because they basically took in, while they said that you couldn't evict anybody, they were basically taking over your own property, making them rules, and you had nothing you could do or say about it. Yeah, Scott, if you look up the definition of private property, you know, one of the characteristics is that you have the ability to alienate it. Um, basically, that means do with it as you will. When you have the government come along and say, oh, no, there's a pandemic, you can't treat certain properties certain ways, then you have an introduction of a regulation or control factor that you didn't have before, and that's going to have a much wider uh, impact downstream of all the things that real estate involves, the landlords and the owners, obviously one of them. And so this is a shocker. This was a big shock to real estate owners across the country. And it, unfortunately, it only, can, it, it only emboldens the uh, institutional buying of our homes and our neighborhoods across this country. Right. And, you know, and here we go again. I mean, this is example number one million about the government trying to get in, involved and, and for a noble reason. Right. They don't want people being thrown out in the middle of the pandemic. I understand that. Right. But. Because they got involved the way they got involved, they've taken a ton of housing off of the market and just made it worse and more expensive. That's right. That's exactly right. The law of unintended consequences, which we lawyers really care about because we know that any time, you know, it's like the law of physics, right? Anytime there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's the same thing in the law. Anytime you implement a policy, there is some sort of reaction to that policy. And when you tell, you know, landlords and homeowners, they cannot foreclose or evict people. You know, it's interesting because if you had a mortgage, those mortgage payments usually get tacked onto the end of your mortgage with penalties and interest, you know, and unless you weren't negotiating something differently. But if you're just saying to a landlord, you can't collect rent and you can't evict these people, you had almost a free pass even, and I'm not saying a lot of Americans are good people and they will pay their rent, but I'm saying when you have a policy that comes out and has a blanket, you can't evict anybody, you have people that maybe could have afforded to pay their rent that say, hey, I can't get evicted. I'm going to, you know, not pay my rent for a couple of months. And and that happened. And we know that that happened. So it's, it's a big problem. And then you have the fact that this actually is increases cost because you have the home ownership going up by that much more. And then when you have price and additional risk, risk of not being able to alienate your property as you normally would or treat your property, go through the legal process with your property as you normally would, then this is an additional cost. It's an additional uncertainty. And Lord knows they're about to potentially, you know, have another panic with this monkeypox. Landlords do not want to think that every time there's some kind of health crisis anywhere in the world, they no longer could potentially be collecting their rent. That is not a recipe for land ownership and maybe the institutions sort of want to see it that way because we see that our home ownership in our neighborhoods is going to institutional ownership. So I just want to be a fly on the wall in the room when they make up these rules because to me <laughs> it's it, it's counterintuitive to common sense. I, I get again I'll say it again like you said most Americans are good people they want to do the right thing and pay their rent on time but if, if you sit there and think that hey I'm going to take the opportunity for me as a business owner to get rid of somebody that's not paying rent and put somebody in there but all the while I have to pay the taxes that you're demanding from me as the government for that property, right? Or I have to pay the mortgage if I don't own it outright for that property. I am paying and getting stacking up all of these bills while I'm not allowed to get rid of the person in there. To me, it, 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 it defies common sense. I can't believe that people in the room would number one agree to that, but it got worse because we had one governor in Michigan that if you owned two homes at that same period of time because of the transfer of people, she was worried about the disease spreading or the virus spreading, you weren't allowed to go to the other home you owned and paid taxes for in that same state, which to me, so those two things, if that doesn't get your blood boiling about what was happening during the pandemic, because I have to remind people, because everybody's already forgotten about how bad it was and the dumb rules we had. You have to remind people about those two things where they actually confiscated your personal property without your permission. Or even, Scott, to be honest, as a lawyer, even going as far as to say you can't have any more than six people in your home. These are all unconstitutional dictates from communist type uh, rulers that we don't uh, tolerate here in America. So while America has gone back to life as somewhat normal um, since Corona, I can tell you there's a lot of lawyers out there that are filing a lot of suits, a lot of a lot of governors, a lot of mayors across this town and winning that these dictates were unconstitutional and definitely extended beyond not only the uh, legislative authority, the executive authority, but also uh, uh, 
um, you know, th we just don't have the authority to tell people uh, to shut down their lives. There's a lot of protections in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and people need to remember that. And, and if we they don't remember it in these pandemics, let's hold them to account. I mean, even the Supreme Court made note of the fact when they were arguing about the vaccine mandate obviously got struck down um, that, you know, how long is an emergency last? It's been two years. Right. And the problem is, is that I know it's wrong, but I don't have time to take off of work and fight, you know, get a lawyer and then fight this. They, they know that you don't have the ability to do that. When Chicago yeah. shut down private parks, you could could not walk through a park by yourself with a mask on because the park was, quote unquote, closed because of the pandemic. It just doesn't make sense. And again, it defies logic. And so I had a warning for my HOA in Arizona. I had more than six people in my house. I don't know who told them, but still, I couldn't believe that my own home, I was being monitored to that extent. And I just wanted to write it all down because I want everybody to remember that that's just not right. And the way that they get around those mandates is because is that you're not going to take the time off to fight them and they know it. Yeah. Well, there are still lawyers out there that will, Scott, and I promise you those fights are happening. And a lot of wins, a lot of wins have accumulated. So there's a lot of governors that have a lot more restrictions this next time around. They try this stuff again. And a lot of Americans, I think, Scott, are a lot more uh, skeptical about the news and vaccine effect effect efficacy and all these things right. that have changed. A lot more people are going to be like, let's see the data. We want to see the facts. We want to actually know what you guys are saying is actually true, because there's been so much, unfortunately, misinformation uh, throughout these two years. And a lot of it is fear mongering to get people to comply with things that they know that they really don't have the authority to do in the first place. Well, they got to watch you and I more often. We'll set them straight, right? All right. That's I really right. appreciate that. <laughs> awesome stuff. We'll, we'll watch this again tonight, I'm sure, someplace else. Thank you very much, Rebecca Walzer, for coming on the show. Great content. Really appreciate being on. All right.